When you walk into a buffet, it looks like a food heaven. Everywhere you are greeted with rows of hot food on display, and you can take as much as you want, all for one just set price. Now as you're stuffing your face with all this food, you're probably wondering to yourself, how do these buffet owners actually make money? Well, these buffet owners aren't idiots, because if they were, they would no longer be in business. They've already calculated how much profit they would likely make off of each customer, so before you go out thinking you're getting a deal, you need to watch this video. That's because in this video, we're going to show you the 8 sneaky ways on how buffets are scamming you to eat the least food as possible. But first, give the videos a thumbs up to support us on the YouTube algorithm. We'll be honest with you, the more likes, the more chances YouTube will push our video. So if you want to support us, just click the like button, share this video with a buffet lover, and we all know at least one of those. I have some of the, um, some of the yellow, and don't get cheap on me. <laughs> Number one, strategic layout. Ever notice in a Chinese buffet, all the heavy carbohydrate foods such as noodles and fried rice are in the front? Same goes for the American buffets. The french fries and mashed potatoes are always placed first. This is a strategic layout to maximize the buffet's profit and fill up your stomach quickly. Studies have shown that the heaviest initial consumption at buffets by customers are normally the first plate. And by putting all the cheaper foods that are heavy in carbs in the front, is purposely tempting you to load up first on it, and by the time you make it to the more expensive foods all the way in the back, such as the meat and seafoods, you will have less room on your plate. Even if you go for the more expensive foods on your second round, you won't be as initially hungry as you were when you first got started. So to outsmart the buffet managers, just simply target expensive things first and avoid the cheap things in front. Two sides are us, the eaters of the world, and our enemy, the evil buffet master. Do you mean your local restaurant owner? Okay, we've set up a real buffet here in our lab. Let's see what the research assistants are doing. Right off the bat, I'm worried about Angela's technique here. This area is what I call the buffet master's booby trap. He's gonna load up this area with cheap filler to try to fill your plate and your stomach before you get to his crown jewel. Number two, they're probably serving you leftover foods. Food wastage is a major concern for buffet managers as it will greatly affect their profit margins. While they cannot reserve the food that the customers did not touch on their plate, and they definitely could pack up the foods that were left untouched in the buffet display and reserve that the following day. You will never know how fresh the food is at a buffet and if it's been cooked that day or leftovers from previous days. You're a restaurant owner pulling food items from a dumpster. But those who work in the same shopping center claim he took those items back into the kitchen. Oh, we are talking about a restaurant that was ordered shut last week by state inspectors. And tonight's Dirty Dining investigator Jeff Weinseer confronts the, the restaurant owner. For several minutes, he spotted digging in the dumpster, removing item after item after item as his wife acts as a lookout. He then walks to the other side of the dumpster and again pulls more things out. Witnesses claim it's food. They tell Local 10 News he took it back to his restaurant right after the state inspector left. Number three, smaller plates means you will eat less. That is the name of the game when it comes to buffet managers and it's been mentioned that their main goal is to get the cheaper foods to fill your stomach up first. Things such as larger plates being strategically placed closer to fried rice and pasta dishes, but the smaller plates around the expensive food such as the seafood and quality cut meats. I was at the buffet the other day and I did notice in how small the plates were. Things were literally falling out as I struggled to eat off the small plates. Just one of each item. Turn into the station for round two. Maximize high value items, e.g. prawns, over lower value bulk foods such as rice or noodles. You want to give a shout out to our first ever super thanks that we received. Thank you, Olivia. We really appreciate your support. Your contributions and donations will be used to support our channel and to keep our coffee habit to keep us up to create these videos for you. Number four, smaller utensils. The smaller plate concept also applies for the serving utensils and it could be huge serving spoons like this one you see here on Amazon for the rice which the buffet wants you to grab a large portion of but small little tongs like this one they can barely grab anything of any sort of weight for the pricey crab legs. Suspect huh? But now you know the reason. Here you go. Get ready, get ready. It's a feeding frenzy at the buffet. Get it, get it, get it, get it. When the crab legs come out it's everyone for themselves. And they're gone in seconds. This buffet a few miles away, watch these two guys go. Number five, excuse me, but where's the service? Unlike a la carte menus, your chicken parmesan should be ready soon. You won't have a server checking in on you all the time. 
Matter of fact, the servers are most likely bussers, and they're just there to pick up your old dishes and clean the tables. That is because buffet management has already factored in the cost of labor, and by cutting costs on the overhead, it will mean less servers, which means more profits. You should be here any minute. Where is the waitress? I'm starving. <laughs> it's a buffet, man. <laughs> oh, here's where I win all my money back. <laughs> Number six, they want you to drink soda. One of the few times you will interact with a server at the buffet is when you first arrive and they ask you what you want to drink. Uh, let me have some uh, Diet Coke ice. Some buffets even make it open to access the fountain soda machine. You should know that buffet is counting on you to order a soda. That is because the soda will help fill up your stomach quickly. In turn, you will consume less food. Restaurants apply another strategy that's hidden in plain sight. Really big soft drink cups so you can fill up on soda. Also take note on how large the soda cups are and how they have free refills. Soda costs close to nothing for buffets so they can turn a profit easily. Next time, just stick with water. Yeah, we might as well eat all we can. No, first we talk tactics. Remember, the aim here is not simply to have a satisfying meal out. The ultimate aim is to beat the buffet. Number seven. Buffets have already done their math. According to some buffet chefs, food costs normally average to about 30% of the meal. So in other words, if the buffet is charging $30 per person, then the food costs should average about $10 for that person. The $30 per person would have already factored in the food cost, the overhead, and labor, and still turn a profit. This is how buffets make money. Hey, man. Boy, did we do the wrong thing. Shrimp? Crab legs, shrimp, potatoes. You know what? We're still a little bit hungry. Can I just take up potatoes? Yeah, help yourself. Look at that. Ta take a crab leg. Are you sure? Absolutely. Take some oh. shrimp, too. Take two shrimp. Here we go. Thank take, you. Take three. You want three? No, two is plenty. That's yeah. all I want. I'll give you some. Go back. Get me some. I need Hi, you. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, um, but um, you can't uh, take from the buffet and share with someone who's ordered off the menu. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to charge you for an additional buffet. It says you told you. Number eight, they will ban people. All what we just mentioned in this video are designed for buffets to turn a profit. But if you're costing them too much money, they will ban you. These people are the super eater types, and when buffets had enough, they will ask them to leave. In 2012, Bill Wiss was asked to leave his local buffet when he was found to be eating too much of the fish and leaving none for the other customers, according to the buffet. Albert Fleming was kicked out of a buffet in Massachusetts for eating too much in 2017. Local restaurant. A customer got upset because an all-you-can-eat fish fry didn't live up to its name. It's f false advertising. Bill Wissett has a beef with the all-you-can-eat fish fry at Chuck's Place in Thamesville. He was there Friday when the restaurant cut him off after he ate a dozen pieces. We asked for more fish and they refused to give us any more fish. The restaurant says it was running out of fish and patients, arguing Bill has been a problem customer before. They sent him on his way with another eight pieces, but that still wasn't enough. He was so fired up, he called the police. Well, there you have it. These are the ways that buffets are trying to scam you from eating too much so that they can always make a profit in the end of the day. If you enjoyed this video, give the video a thumbs up and share this with someone who loves eating at buffets. Leave your comments of your experiences with buffets, and until then, stay informed, and Genius Tomato out.